and uh, we'll get rolling. <clears throat> Good morning if you're if you're on the west coast or afternoon if you're pretty much anywhere else um, to our October webinar, How to Make the Most of Your Caring Campus Network Benefits. My name is Bala King Rushing. I am Associate Vice President and a Caring Campus Coach here at IEBC. And uh, if you haven't heard of, Car of the Caring Campus Network, that's okay, because uh, we'll be going through what that is. It's a new program as of this year, um, and we will get all of your questions answered. Um, basically, uh, that's what we're going to do. I will present the uh, basics of the network and all of the benefits. And then we will have a Q and A when I'm done and uh, I will be happy to stick around as long as I can and answer every single question if I possibly can. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. As I used to tell my students, um, you gotta be brave enough to ask because you're probably not the only person <laughs> who has that question. Um, if you want to remember your questions um, or sort of put them down in the chat uh, ahead of time, we can keep track of that. Uh, but we'll, we won't start answering questions until I am through the presentation. All right, and with that, there is one thing I like to do when we get started, and that is, speaking of volunteers, um, or speaking of being brave, I mean, uh, I'm gonna ask for a few brave volunteers to uh, introduce yourselves and um, just think about for a second, what does the word networking mean to you? And how do you feel about networking as, as a concept or as an activity? Um, I'll give you a second to think about that and then I'll ask for a few volunteers to uh, share your thoughts. And Bala, can we ask them to use um, raising their hand and then we'll go ahead and allow them to talk when we see a hand raised? Yes, please. That feature. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thoughts on networking? I do see we have one hand raised. Uh, Heather, I'm going to go ahead and uh, here. I think Heather's hand went down. So we have Angela. Go ahead, Angela. Can't hear you, Angela. Maybe we'll come back to Angela and Willie. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Willie Blackman. I am the Dean of Student Services uh, here at Crafton Hills College. Uh, and so uh, what does networking mean to me? Ultimately, networking is about building relationships, um, usually for like some form of like social or uh, cultural capital that can be established. Um, and how do I feel about it as a, con you know, as the concept and or activity? Um, I mean, it's something we do naturally, um, honestly, uh, whether it is a forced activity or something that we have to, um, I mean, we do as people, everybody's a stranger until you get to know them. So a big part of networking, when I think about it, is uh, navigating the interpersonal skills and the connections that take place, Um to be able to build rapport and move on from being that stranger um, to being something more. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, you know, humans are social creatures, so it is kind of a, a natural thing whether we feel like it or not. <laughs> but uh, I, I really appreciate also that idea that everyone's a stranger until they're not, more or less. There was another hand. Um, we can go ahead and try Angela again. Angela, if you can unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, there we go. Okay. Um, so my name is Angela Nava. I'm a Caring Campus Ambassador at Shasta College. And uh, networking means two things to me. Um, networking is using the folks around you that you've built re relationships to get things done, as well as going to conferences and putting yourself out there and meeting new people. Um, how I feel about it as a con concept. I am an introvert. I'm an IN. Uh, my 
personality type is very introverted. Um, and so I, I get a little anxiety in networking, but I force myself to do it. And once I'm done, I enjoy it. <laughs> Excellent. I can appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. Um, no one who works with me will believe it, but I too am an introvert actually. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea of uh, networking, going out and putting yourself out there, as you said, uh, can be sort of scary in spite of the social nature of the human animal. So Agreed. Uh, yeah, I totally <laughs> Thank you. I see Juanita's hand is up. Juanita, you'll unmute. Can you hear me now? Sorry yes. about that. Hi, everybody. My name is Juanita Lockett. I'm with Temple College, and I work with the workforce development here at Temple College. And I also serve on the IEBC um, IR Council, so Research Council. And um, so I'm glad to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. And what does networking mean to me? I feel like networking is getting to know people. I'm just layman's language, getting to know people outside of my circle. And the more people you know, the more you're able to share opportunities to learn from each other and to share experiences. Because when great minds come together, a lot of great things happen. So that's what networking means to me. And I'm happy to be networking with y'all today. Thank you so much. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, yeah, again, reaching out outside of our regular circles. And um, it's really just all about making connections, isn't it? So that's where we're going to go from here, actually. Thank you all for sharing. And um, I'm going to run through real quick uh, a little bit about IEBC, just because um, that's one of the standard things that we make sure everybody knows exactly who we are. So um, we've been a uh, nonprofit, a 501c3 nonprofit for over 15 years. Um, our founders, Brad Phillips and Jordan Horowitz, are also the co-founders of the CalPass program, uh, student outcomes tracking uh, from kindergarten through K-16, essentially, uh, in California, which is, I believe, still the largest program of its type in the world. Um, and when IEBC started, we were doing data-informed education first, uh, which is making use of the data that we collect as institutions in order to really push student success forward, uh, rather than just collecting it and letting it sit. Um, Brad and Jordan wrote a book about creating a data-informed culture. You can see the cover there. Um, and then as we've moved on with Caring Campus, or to Caring Campus, um, we're now working in 31 states with more than 140 colleges and universities. We started working with universities uh, not too long ago. And uh, so that's a really exciting uh, event for us, sorry. <laughs> uh, and you'll find, uh, actually, as we go through this, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on with IABC this year. So let's get down to it. Um, the network is a new program that's intended to support uh, the institutionalization and sustainability uh, of your Caring Campus implementation. So it's for colleges and universities that have um, already or are in the process of implementing Caring Campus. Um, what we really want to do is uh, to recognize the increasing adoption of Caring Campus across the country. Like I said, it's over 140 colleges and universities now and more inquiries every day. This is um, you know, you may have heard that the self, the uh, sense of belonging, um, pan academic or epidemic, sorry, uh, is is really catching people's attention in academia, and we are really situated. Caring Campus is situated right at the heart of addressing that particular uh, issue, no matter uh, what level of institution you are. So in the spirit of connecting, we have uh, created this network that is just getting off the ground uh, in the second half of this year. And it allows uh, our participant colleges and universities to connect with each other, learn from each other, uh, to do the networking that is um, really a way to enhance all of the other activities that we do. So we're not doing it in a silo. No one needs to reinvent the wheel. No one needs to um, you know, feel like they're on their own. We uh, are specifically collecting and providing access to um, as many resources as we can in one place. So the network is intended to be a hub for 
resources and information as well as connection. And um, this second half of 2024, uh, the building of the network is founded by the ECMC, funded, I should say, by the ECMC Foundation, um, who have also generously paid for membership for all of our Caring Campus networks for the second half of this year. Um, and so all of the benefits that you're, that you're about to see are already available to you now um, and for no charge this particular year. In future years, starting in 2025, we're going to start charging membership fees. Um, just a, a modest fee to help cover our costs, uh, since we will no longer be funded by ECMC for that. Um, but hopefully uh, you'll find that the value is um, absolutely worth it. And again, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on that comes with this. So um, how this all got started, the idea came from uh, just the idea idea of learning from our coaches, really. We learn from our experiences. We've been doing this kind of thing um, for several years now, since before the pandemic. And um, honestly, uh, as I mentioned, we don't want our colleges to be reinventing the wheel. We feel the same way about ourselves and our own processes. We are constantly trying to improve ourselves. Uh, so we listen to the feedback that we get from caring campus colleges. We listen to the feedback that we get from our coaches. And we found a lot of um, innovations from implementations over the years uh, at the colleges and universities we've worked with. Uh, we've seen coaches reporting many of the similar sort of growing pains uh, as the implementation becomes more mature and we look towards sustainability, uh, long-term sustainability uh, for the program. And so we made a conscious decision to start collecting uh, these experiences and the resources that help to answer questions, things like that, um, into something that we really wanted to be more than just like an FAQ page, right? Or a bunch of links, just a list of resources. Uh, and that gave us the idea of creating um, an actual network, a membership program that would give robust access to these kinds of resources. And again, with the generous funding of the ECMC Foundation, we were able to uh, get this off the ground this year. And um, again, hopefully you'll find that the value is, uh, is as exciting as I find it, quite frankly. <laughs> So here's a brief list of the benefits, and we are going to go through these in a little bit greater detail. Um, the first of all, and one of the most exciting things actually, is uh, that members have access to a searchable artifacts database. What we call um, artifacts are uh, basically almost anything that is created by a college or university as part of its caring campus implementation. So, um, you know, if, you're, if your school's made uh, swag, t-shirts, buttons, things like that, those count as artifacts, but also um, web pages or uh, guiding documentations or uh, training outlines, pretty much anything that has been created for the purpose of moving caring campus forward at your school can be counted as an artifact. Um, we are constantly collecting more of these artifacts uh, from our caring campuses, and so the database is growing. Everything is growing this year. Uh, as I said, this is, this is a brand new thing that we're rolling out. Another benefit is uh, free attendance at webinars like this one, because again, starting next year, um, these will not always be free. There will be discounts on academy registrations, and we'll talk more about the academy in a little bit, as well as discounts on our annual conference, which uh, if you haven't heard about it, um, is coming, the first annual conference is coming November 2025. You will absolutely hear more about that very soon um, as we get closer to the uh, one year out date next month. Um, we'll have a member directory uh, so that members can uh, get easy access to each other to contact each other directly. Um, we will also be putting out a network newsletter uh, at least twice a year. Um, we haven't quite figured all of that out yet, but uh, at, at least twice a year, a newsletter that highlights um, Caring Campus innovations, uh, spotlighting specific campuses, things like that. Um, also, members will have opportunities to present at conferences with IEBC so that we can help spread the word and uh, celebrate the achievements that you all are, are having. And um, also, last but not least, definitely not least, members are eligible for what we are now calling Caris Caring Campus Certification. There's a lot more to be said about that, uh, so that will be coming here in just a little bit, but uh, I think it's the most exciting part 
of, uh, of the membership, quite honestly, and of the benefits that are coming. So uh, to get into this a little bit deeper, um, in pursuit of connection and communication, the main part of networking, uh, I mentioned um, presentations, conference presentations. Uh, some of you may have seen uh, IEBC staff at uh, presenting at conferences about Caring Campus, or you may have gone to a conference or convening of some sort where uh, one of our colleges has um, is discussing what Caring Campus means or how it has been implemented on their campus. Um, we are constantly being asked to uh, to bring our knowledge, information, and um, methods to various venues um, at state, regional, and national conferences. And what we really prefer to have our Caring Campus partners uh, do the talking whenever possible. Um, for example, next week, I will be at the RP Group's uh, Strengthening Student Success Conference, uh, presenting with a couple of college presidents. And basically, they're going to do most of the talking about what Caring Campus has meant for their colleges over the last couple of years. So um, our members will essentially become preferred partners uh, whenever we're going out to spread the word and um, liaisons or ambassadors uh, and presidents in particular, but also staff and faculty um, will be invited to, to come speak with us depending on the nature of the, of the conference. Um, we'll also have, as I mentioned, a directory that will list liaisons um, as well as uh, other contact information uh, that each of the colleges provides so that again, you can contact each other directly without having to work, uh, rely on us as a mediator. Um, and that again, if you see something that you see from a particular college uh, like Temple, for example, that was mentioned that, um, then you can just call them up and say, hey, how did this happen? Or how does this work? Or, you know, and just sh sh share and benefit from each other's experiences and wisdom. Uh, and then last but not least, um, we are still working on its format. But as I mentioned, there will be a network newsletter that will come out at least twice a year exclusively to members. You heard discount as a word that I uh, used several times in the list of benefits. Uh, and this is where um, you're really going to get a lot of value for your membership. Um, several of you may have already heard of the Caring Campus Academy. Uh, that is a series of course sessions, essentially, that we host for existing Caring Campuses. One of the things we have seen over the years is as you have staff or employee turn or uh, faculty turnover, um, you begin to lose your institutional uh, memory or information about Caring Campus and how it's supposed to work. So uh, we offer the Academy as a way to help with onboarding new employees, uh, and we introduce them to the behaviors associated with Caring Campus and really get a, a bit of a hands-on approach to that over the course of uh, either four for faculty or five for staff uh, sessions. That are, that are held weekly. We actually just started the new session uh, of the Academy for the fall last week. And uh, keep your eyes open, there will be, um, we're planning to offer it every spring and every fall. Uh, this spring 2024 was extremely, extremely popular. We got great feedback on that. So we will keep doing that. Um, so your participation uh, in the Academy will be discounted. Um, those who are participating this year are already receiving the discounted rates because again, everybody is already a member uh, at no, no charge this year. Uh, the conference for next year is gonna be really, really exciting. It's going to be in uh, San Diego from November 12th to November 14th, uh, 2025, not next month. <laughs> and the conference um, is going to be a real opportunity for people to showcase, uh, for institutions to showcase um, their specific ways of making the most of uh, Caring Campus, of the behaviors. Um, and we're going to focus, it's not just a general kind of thing. We'll have four different tracks, uh, leadership, faculty, staff, and researchers, um, because the data use and, and collection is a really, really important part of everything that we do. Um, and so uh, there will be opportunities for everybody, no matter um, what your particular role is, to get something and to contribute something 
um, to the community. So stay tuned for more information on that. Again, uh, we're going to have big announcements about the coming of the conference in November, and I believe registration will probably be opening in uh, January. And then we have other online events like this one, um, webinars, roundtables, other kinds of online forums. And uh, starting in 2025, we are going to charge just because it costs a lot to keep the lights on, as you know. Um, we're going to charge $99 for uh, registration um, for any one of these online events. But members, um, if you're coming from a member institution, you will continue to have free access to these online events as a benefit of membership. Now, the database. Um, this is the second most exciting part of it, if you ask me. Uh, we've been talking about the artifacts. Um, this, they, we now have a place where they are collected all in one area and it's searchable. It includes images, videos, documents, all kinds of things. I am just gonna show you basically what it looks like because it's active right now. And I have a link uh, at the end of the slideshow uh, where you can, that gets you to access this. So once you've logged in, you have to create an account, but uh, there's no charge for that. And it just collects a little bit of basic information so that uh, we can make sure it is for members only. Um, and then once you have logged in, it will remember you and greet you with this page. And we just have a simple, uh, the database access database button and any second now. There we go. <laughs> um, here's the search page. We'll have some sort of featured items uh, that will change um, on this main screen. But as you can see, uh, we have lots of different categories of items. So if I want to um, take a look at different logos that have been created, customized logos, uh, you can get access to those uh, from different schools, different colleges and universities. Um, there are testimonials and trainings and, and examples of badges. Um, we are also sharing this with new caring campuses that are undergoing coaching as we speak so that they can, again, not have to reinvent the wheel, uh, but see what kinds of things are being done all across the nation. We also um, give each college or university credit for their particular item. And that also means that you can search by the name of your college if you're looking, or not necessarily yours, but a college or university if you're looking for something from a specific institution. And uh, we also have the, the states that each of them are in so that you can search by state if that is something that you're looking for. That was requested. So <laughs> we added that as one of our search features. Um, and then if there are keywords that are just included in a description, you can search by uh, whatever words come to mind as well. Um, we can also filter by documents, images, links, and videos. There are going to be a lot of videos because that's becoming a more popular type of artifact. And uh, they're a lot of fun, actually, just to sort of browse through. So please feel free to um, create your account, log in, and uh, just... Oops. There we go. And just, um, you know, enjoy what there is to see as well as maybe get um, invited or inspired to come up with new things for your school. For example, if I filter by celebration, we have different kinds of uh, celebratory activities or artifacts uh, from flyers. This is an event uh, that has a welcome tent that was branded for Caring Campus, um, a medal, uh, custom mouse pad as a way to um, to celebrate. And one of my favorites is cookies. <laughs> These are actually cookies with frosting that are in the local Caring Campus logo and on and on and on. All righty. So that's the, that's the database. Um, and again, that's always growing. If you have uh, things that you'd like to share with us, you can contact your coach or send them directly to me. My contact information will be, uh, again, at the end of this uh, presentation. Um, but we, again, uh, we're welcoming everything that we possibly can uh, because we want to share and celebrate and, and assist everyone as much as we can. Whew. Then comes, last but not least, as I said before, the certification program. So members are not automatically certified as caring campuses, but this is an official thing that we're starting to offer um, in just two weeks. We'll start offering it. I believe uh, October 15th is, is the start date. Um, 
members are eligible. And that means that this year right now, because everybody's a member, that means your college can be eligible to apply for a Caring Campus certification. Um, the application is uh, sort of a self-study. We're just finishing up that part of the website. It'll be submitted online and I'll show you uh, what the basic of the website looks like in just a moment. Um, but uh, you'll be able to provide evidence that you meet various criteria and categories that we'll discuss in indicating your ongoing commitment to Caring Campus. Um, we at uh, the staff, the management actually here at uh, IABC will review applications um, and the the criteria, the scoring rubric, all of that is gonna be public. We believe in transparency. So that's also gonna be on the website. So you'll know what you're shooting for and what we're looking at um, so that uh, eventually you can be named either a bronze, silver or gold certified Caring Campus. That certification lasts for two years as long as you maintain your membership for those two years. And uh, we'll have a digital badge that kind of looks like this one, uh, this example that I have uh, corresponding with either the bronze, silver or gold. And uh, there will also be a physical award, probably a plaque uh, that will be given to your college or university. Um, the digital badge, one of the great things about that is that it can be used in most of your communications. So, um, you know, email signatures, put it on your website, put it on physical items like banners or, or shirts or buttons, other kinds of things like that to associate with your own uh, college logo. Um, it will have, as uh, you can see here, the particular year that you earned that certification uh, so that you can keep track over over time of uh, perhaps improvement or of maintaining say gold status for as long as, uh, as, long as the program's been around. Um, again, certification lasts for two years, as long as you remain a member. If your membership lapses, then your certification will also lapse with it. Um, we will be able to provide confirmation or verification of certification uh, if, it, if necessary to third parties. All you gotta do is just ask us and we'll be able to help you out with that um, if that becomes uh, a, a, an important question. Um, and also, we will have an application window next year uh, that will be sort of spring into summer of each year. Um, and if you apply and don't make it to certification, you can reapply uh, the following year with no penalty or anything like that, as long as you maintain your membership. Also, if you applied and you're granted bronze or silver certification, and you really feel like you can you can uh, make progress toward the next level faster than the two years, you can feel free to reapply the following year and uh, perhaps earn the next level um, or a higher level of certification. We have no problem with that. We like to try and be uh, flexible as well as transparent. Uh, the basic categories uh, that we'll be looking for criteria for these uh, will be in training and hiring. And this is application of caring campus in these areas or applying these areas to Caring Campus. Um, accountability and data use, which I said is, uh, as I said, is very important to our organization. Uh, the role of leadership uh, on the campus in the program. Um, celebration and culture, uh, right, uh, leaders in particular, uh, when you've been through the program, you know that we ask for uh, support, monitor, and celebration of Caring Campus, um, what your staff and or faculty are doing. And then last but not least, messaging. And that involves um, internal messaging uh, with employees as well as uh, with students, as well as possibly external messaging to the community around you or uh, other sort of ways that you might be spreading the word about uh, Caring Campus and how it is working on your at your institution. Uh, an important thing to note is that gold certification is only available to those institutions that have been through both staff and faculty. Um, you may or may not be aware that there are two Caring Campus programs, um, partly because the interactions between students and staff or students and faculty are very different kinds of things. Um, you know, we talk about uh, classroom behaviors and classroom management type things on the faculty side uh, and more of um, serving students and connecting with students um, in the more office type situation of staff. Uh, so there are some differences between those and both programs have uh, great value. So we are hoping to encourage a holistic approach on the part of our colleges and universities to Caring Campus. Let me take, uh, take you to the website real quick. 
There we go. Uh, so this is just a draft of the website, but it will be going live next week. Um, all of the stuff that I've talked about is here. There is an awful lot of text here. Uh, I'm going to put some pictures on there. And in any case, uh, the certification process is explained here in detail. Um, the purpose of it uh, is also explained here at the beginning. Um, we then go down to uh, the different levels. Uh, these are what the badges will look like um, with the specific years uh, that you earned them. Um, and again, the application isn't live yet, but it will be next week. But you'll be able to just click here and go and upload files, uh, type into text boxes. It's, uh, it's going to be a completely online uh, self-study application. And then all of the scoring information is down here. Um, what you need to get to each tier and the kinds of, uh, uh, kinds of criteria we're looking for. So um, do you have, for example, as far as messaging goes, visual materials, as far as uh, celebration of culture, do you have regular meetings that involve um, caring campus, things like that. Each tier has required elements and then uh, additional elements that can uh, that are scored uh, with a point system that contribute to your ratings. Uh, so again, same thing with silver, and then finally gold. And the application itself will expand each of these criteria to explain um, in greater detail the kinds of things that we're talking about in case they're not clear. Um, and that's that. We are really excited to uh, be able to apply um, or to open applications, I should say, uh, for all of our um, all of our caring campuses across the country. Um, and uh, hopefully this is the kind of thing that can help uh, reinvigorate programs if necessary or keep people excited or um, you know just we are we are so excited to be able to do what we can to help support your sustainability and, and uh, institutionalization of Caring Campus for the long haul. Um, you probably heard during your coaching sessions that we are here for you, um, essentially in perpetuity. Once you've been through coaching with us, we don't just say, you know, go with God and you're done. Um, we are always here to provide resources, to answer questions, to help keep you on track, whatever's necessary. And that's the idea behind these new programs, certification, um, network, academy, the conference, all of that is designed to support your efforts in making your caring campus as strong as it can be for the sake of student success, which is, of course, why we are all here. So where is all of this stuff, since there's an awful lot to it? Uh, everybody who is attending today and will also make it available um, sort of generally, uh, these links will receive a copy of this, uh, this PowerPoint, probably in PDF format. These links are live. Um, note that the conference webpage is actually not live yet, but it will be next month. Um, we have a link to the network and the login page where you can create your account if you haven't already done so. Um, the Academy main page and the certification page that I just show showed you, which uh, there it is, October 15th, will be fully built out. Um, here in a couple of weeks, and um, you can start apl applications pretty much right away at that point. Um, we'll be looking to make decisions on certifications uh, probably by January with um, any applications we receive October, November, and early December. Um, coming later, as I mentioned, the, uh, the conference webpage next month, and uh, the directory um, became a sort of lower uh, priority than some of these other things that we were working on, uh, but that will be coming later this year as well. And again, everybody has access to this um, this year so that you can uh, have, um, you know, have something to work with uh, and understand what we're talking about when we are uh, dealing with the, the network what it means for us as an institution, what it means for you all as institutions. Um, and so that we can, you know, share and spread the word and uh, try and do our best to support everybody. So with that, <laughs> I know there's an awful lot to digest there. So take a moment and breathe, breathe it all in. Um, but uh, if we can do the raising hands thing again, I think, 
Um, I am here now to answer your questions. Uh, anything, everything, um, whatever you're interested in knowing more about regarding network, academy, specific benefits, um, the conference. Uh, oh, I forgot to, to mention, by the way, uh, for those who are related or uh, sorry, familiar with the sense of belonging research, um, we will be having uh, Vince Tinto and uh, Peter Felton, uh, two major researchers in the field, um, as our keynote speakers at next year's conference, uh, which helps to make that even more exciting. Um, <laughs> we're trying to do, again, the best we can uh, for all of our members um, to, to make the most of this. So uh, hands, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, compliments, uh, anything you got. There's, is that Gene? Oops. Uh, Natalie, can you help me out with the- Yep, yep, they, they just unmuted. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, can you tell us um, how much um, per year uh, the, the dues will be for the network? Um, yes, it is escaping me the moment. I believe it's gonna be, uh, around uh, two to three thousand dollars a year, um, depending on the size of uh, your college or university. Um, that's based on student enrollment. Thank you. Uh, Paula, we do have a question um, in the Q&A. What will be the cost of joining the CC network in 2025? Um, well, that is, uh, that's the question that we just answered. So two to $3,000, depending on uh, the size of your institution based on enrollment. Um, and that will be an annual fee uh, that helps us again, you know, it keeps the lights on, uh, pays for um, a lot of the infrastructure that's going to keep all of these kinds of things going. Very reasonable. <laughs> Yeah, I can't see the Q&A either. Uh, we have one more question on the Q&A. How can I add myself to the Caring Campus listserv so that I can attend more webinars? Oh, just ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can, uh, we have contact information on our website. Um, my contact information, again, is at the end of this presentation. So you can contact me, you can contact any of our staff. Uh, contact your coach, uh, the one who has been um, been working with your particular college or university. Um, but just let us know, and we'll be happy to um, to add you to our distribution lists uh, so that you can hear about all the exciting things that are coming. Jean, again, go ahead. I have to unmute her. Give me one second here. Um, will there be any kind of um, calendar with events that will with with which will be accessible by either members or non-members with the, all of that information about costs and you know live events, webinars, that type of thing? Will there be anywhere will that will be posted that we can right. refer to? That is a fantastic question, and that is part of why we have this particular event going on. Um, generally, in the past, we have done announcements by email and on social media, and uh, I am now going to start working on a page that will have a calendar of events coming up uh, that will at least give you, I don't know, maybe uh, six to 12 months notice of, um, of coming events. Uh, thank you very much for that idea. And Thank you. I know that's going to be really important. Um, we also have the question that came through, what is the fee for CC Academy registrations with and without CC Network membership? Ah, great question. Uh, Academy um, registration uh, for the course is 
again, depending on your, your enrollment at your college, anywhere from $250 to $450 per person um, with discounts available if you enroll more than 10 people in a single, uh, at a single time. Um, uh, the additional beyond 10 will get a 50% discount. So it's a really serious savings. That is the member price. Um, the non-member pricing for, uh, for registration for the academy is, uh, I believe it's uh, another $50 on top of that. So it's $300 to $500 per, uh, per participant um, and with a slightly smaller discount if you're enrolling uh, more than 10 folks at one time. Also, when can we apply for 2025 CC Network membership? Um, you know, that's a good question. Uh, we will probably be having that open um, in November, uh, but I don't remember specific discussion of that. But it, of course, it'll be before January. So um, I think we're going to shoot for November on uh, opening the membership fees, uh, accepting membership fees, I should say. So although if you need to get a uh, like a financial process with purchase orders or things like that um, underway, uh, you can contact us right now. We can help you get started with that sort of thing. Uh, Julie. Hey, let me. I don't see Julie's hand. Oh, let's see. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> Hi, I just had a quick question. Um, can an institution still go through coaching sessions, go through the program without um, paying for and being a part of the network? Yes. Oh, you know what? That was something that I overlooked. Um, and that is uh, new caring campuses uh, who are just completing their coaching starting next year um, or the end of this year will also start with a free membership uh, to get them rolling for their first year and only have to pay dues after that first year. Okay, and looks like we're getting the same question again. Maybe some were um, hadn't joined us yet, but what are the fees for the network membership? Network membership, uh, that's going to be two to $3,000, depending on the size per year, depending on the uh, enrollment that you have at your institution. And we can also, um, you know, if, if you end up with a partial year, we'll, we'll end up prorating that. Uh, of course, you, you won't have to pay full price if you only get a partial year. Looks like that's all the questions we have for now. Okay. If anyone else has any last minute questions, please raise your hand or. Yeah, them. please uh, feel free to keep raising hands. I do have a couple more slides here. We're not quite finished yet. There we go. Um, we do have a survey uh, to see what your opinion of this particular presentation was. We Again, we're always trying to improve our own operations as well. Uh, so please feel free to go to this link. Again, you'll get a copy of this presentation uh, later on by email, so you can uh, take care of it later as well. But we've got the QR code. The, the survey is live right now if you want to go ahead um, and take it at that uh, or take care of it here in just a moment. Uh, so I'll leave that up for just a sec. Is there another Q&A question? There is. Um, are there any perks for the certifications, gold, silver, bronze? Uh, well, aside from bragging rights, you mean? <laughs> that's, uh, that's really um, the, the biggest thing is, um, you know, we will help celebrate, but we, uh, the, the badge is a physical opportunity for you uh, to be able to celebrate and shout to the world um, that you are uh, among the, um, the sort of elite implementations, as it were, uh, of Caring Campus, that not only are you 
doing your best by, uh, by implementing the program in the first place, which is what all of us are trying to do for student success, creating that sense of welcome, that sense of belonging, um, but uh, that you have taken steps above and beyond to make sure that that's a real serious part of your culture and uh, the way that you serve students. So um, no other specific perks uh, for earning the badge, but you do sort of get to shout it from the rooftops uh, that you have uh, attained that level and um, uh, yeah. I'm gonna move on to my contact information. So that QR code there is my uh, digital business card. Uh, basically, it's got all this information as well as a, a link to connect with me on LinkedIn if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, again, you'll be able to do this from uh, the, the PDF. And last but not least, thank you all so very much for your time, your attention, your enthusiasm, your questions. Um, spread the word. Let everybody know um, on your own campuses and share with others if you if you know that they're doing Caring Campus, maybe didn't have the opportunity to uh, to come join us today. Um, really, this is uh, this is something that we are hoping will change the way that we interact with students as as a nation, as an industry, if you will, in in higher education. Um, we're here for the students, but we have to partner with you and, and together we can make this, uh, make this into a, an even bigger reality. It is something that we'd like to see grow every day, every year, um, until uh, this is just a natural part of the way higher education works. So uh, I'll wait around for a little bit um, to see if there are any more questions, uh, but if there are none, Please uh, feel free to um, have the rest of your hour to enjoy. Uh, and again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you being here. We should probably stop the recording.